Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? I'm doing very well. Yesterday, my neighbor down the road, one of her goats had babies, kids. So um, I went down and I love it when they're just hours old and these goats are so cute and they're like little babies. And so I held one and oh, this one was just so lovely and I named him. His name is Humphrey and they like the name and he's a little tan boy and the, his brother is black and white and there are three other females that are pregnant and should be delivering in the next few weeks. So um, yeah, these babies are just so cute. I just love them. So I came home smelling like like a uh, goat pee <laughs> and my cats my cats went nuts they could smell it on my shoes and on my uh, pants and they were just rubbing all around trying to get their scent onto it so anyway also i'm going to show you my vintage toy some of the toys that i used to play with in the 60s um so, without further ado, I'm going to show you the first one. And this, I hope you can see it, is Gumby and Pokey. Some of you who have watched my other videos learned that my criminal history includes stealing a Gumby from the store. I wanted it. My dad said no. And I overruled that decision and stole it. And I got caught. My dad turned around, drove me back, and made me apologize and give it back. And I had my, I think my allowance, which was 25 or 50 cents a week taken away and um, yeah, I got in trouble. So this is Gumby now. Gumby bends, you know, and so does Pokey with the big eyes. And I remember watching Gumby and Pokey and thinking, He's got some disease with his eyes bulging out like that, you know. <laughs> but a horse has eyes bulging out like this. See, they don't. So let me tell you a little bit about Gumby and Pokey and their origin. Get my glasses on. Gumby was created by Art Clokey in the early 1950s after he finished film school at the University of Southern California, USC. His first animated film was a 1953 three-minute student film called Gumbasia, a surreal montage of moving and expanding lumps of clay to music in a parody of Disney's Fantasia. <laughs> so Gumbasia. Um, he liked the kinesthetic style and his professor Slavko Vorkapic described as massaging of the eyeball. So much of Gumby's look and feel was inspired by this technique of camera movements and editing. So it was kind of that, what, what do they call it, claymation, where they move him, take a picture, and then move him into the next one. So the name Gumby came from the muddy clay found at Cloakie's grandparents' farm that his family called Gumbo. Gumby's appearance was inspired by a suggestion from his wife, Ruth, that Gumby be based on the gingerbread man. Cloakey saw the color green as both racially neutral and a symbol of life. I didn't know that. That was forward thinking. 
you know? Uh, Gumby's legs and feet were made wide to pragmatically ensure that the figure would stand up during stop-motion filming, and his slanted head was based on the hairstyle of Cloakie's father, Charles Farrington, in old photographs. So his hair was like, you know, the big, you know, combed back and uh, waxed back hair. So, anyway, um, in 1955 and 56, 25 episodes, 11 minutes each, aired on NBC. In early episodes, Gumby's voice was provided by Ruth Eggleston, the wife of the show's director. Until Dallas McKinnon assumed the role in 1957. Gumby's best friend, the orange pony named Pokey, was introduced during the earliest episodes. So, anyway, in 1959, the Gumby show entered syndication and was produced well into the 60s, and that's when I would watch it. So, they moved to a studio in Glendora, California, until the production ended in 1969. So, that is the story of Gumby and Pokey. Okay, now, the next is something I loved and collected a lot of, and they're called Flatsies. <laughs> Flatsy dolls. Look at these. Sorry. Sorry, Flatsy. Picking you up. And they are flat. They are flat. And they have long hair that is longer than their body. And they came or you could buy extra little places that they could stand and they came with these little hooks on the back so you could stand them up oops sorry and aren't they cute and so they have combs you can comb their hair <laughs> her hair is all ratted but this one look at this one She's a little redhead. Come on. Focus. See? They're flat. They're completely flat. And so you can comb their hair. And so now this one, I've got two of these. And they're dark haired long and braided and they even have hats that go to their outfits so let me tell you a little bit about flat seas Flatsy dolls are flat dolls that were made by the Ideal Toy Company from 1969 through 1973 by Hank Kramer. They were originally marketed to little girls. Like many vintage dolls, Flatsy dolls are now collector's items. They have long hair which goes to the floor. They are vivid in colors. Uh, like bright blue, yellow, pink, and they're made of soft vinyl with wires inside the neck and limbs and body, which make them poseable. Their faces have sweet, grinning expressions with eyes looking either to the left or right. I never noticed that. So, okay, we've got lefties, all left, 
Yep. Yeah. That's I never noticed that. Hmm. It's interesting. The di there are a couple of different designs. Look at their faces. <clears throat> the packaging the Flatsy doll is sold in can be used as a decorative picture frame, and the doll is also possible to wear as a pin. Yes, I remember that. In 1969, when Flatsy retailed for $3, the Corpus Christi Times described it as reasonably priced. Each flatsy has a theme and comes with an accessory and a cardboard liner with a picture in keeping with that theme. They also have a plastic clip that looks like this. Um, to hold the doll in place on the liner card, which is also detached for playtime. Commercials for Flatsies featured the song, She's Flat and All That. Flat, flat dolls, the Flatsy dolls wear, wears mod clothes reflecting the styles of the 60s. Every Flatsy came with shoes and in nearly every case, a hat. So, see, she's got, they've got shoes on still. She's got shoes. Yep, they all... Oh, no, she's barefoot. I One of them does not have shoes. So, anyway. Those are my flat sea dolls. And they've got their nice little combs. Okay. And the next one, which is also the last one of this little short video, is called A Little Kittle. Look at this. I love these. These bottles, you could hang on something. And they've got a little doll inside of there, like two inches. And you would open this up. This comes off. And it's a perfume bottle. And each one had its own scent. Now, I can't smell anything now, but look at her. Two inches. So let me tell you about little kittles. Kittles were dolls originally produced by the toy maker Mattel in 1965. Um, let's see, they were introduced to the New York Toy Fair in 1966. And the sensation they created in the toy world caused other toy companies to, pr to produce their own tiny dolls. So the dolls were designed to have a close resemblance to little children in neighborhoods around America. I do not see... kid in any neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So, the first set of ten dolls in the premiere series called Little Kittles used only four different head molds, but they had different hairstyles and face paint. An accessory 
An accessory introduced in 1968 was the Little Kittle Talking Townhouse, which had one of the Mattel talking voice units inside. When the chatty ring was pulled, one of eight different phrases could be heard, such as, This is where the little kittles live. I remember that. The voice unit was the same one that had been introduced in 1960 into the Chatty Cathy doll. I had one of those, Chatty Cathy. So, let's see. The, the dolls are made of soft vinyl with painted facial features and rooted brushable hair. Now, some were, let's see, the first, second, and third series called Bigger Bodies ranged from two and three quarter inches to three and a half inches, while the Skadiddle Kittles were four inches tall and had a special mechanism inside the body which allowed them to walk, wave, and ride vehicles, vehicles with the push of a child's hands. I used to have some of those too. They were bigger. So anyway, and they some came in a little like a jewelry case and you could wear it like a pin. You could pin it onto your clothes. Um, the smaller dolls are marked under their non-removable non clothing. Let's see. They were... All the dolls were marked with Mattel or MI, a date, and either Japan or Hong Kong or Taiwan on the back of the shoulders or on the back of the head near the hairline. The first series of the nine little kittles and one special doll set was available only through the Sears and Roebuck Christmas catalog. Do you remember that? I showed you that. Um, so, the small two-inch dolls have no wires inside for posing, and unlike the first ten and the new storybook kittles, their clothes are not removable. So, anyway. And they continued to come out with various themes and dresses and you know, clothing ensembles. So, this is the only one I have. And I love these. And a friend of mine, her name was Kimmy, she had, like, lots more than I did. And I used to love me going over there and we'd play with them together. So, Put her back in her perfume bottle. And then secure it. So I just wanted to share with you some of my favorite toys from the 60s. Um, there were some other things too that I liked, but for the most part, we were, we played outside. You know, we left and just took off for the day and came back when we either had to go to the bathroom or we were hungry or it was dinner time or the street lights were coming on. And, um, I remember waking up in the mornings and looking outside. I'd lift my shade and my window was off the front porch and I would look out and see kids outside and I just remember thinking, I wonder what we're going to play today. Are we going to go somewhere? Are we, you know, going to strike up some adventure? And if it was a, you know, Saturday uh, weekend, you know, we used to spend our allowance at the Ben Franklin. And I've said this in other videos, 
one of the big exciting things about that was not only getting to the store and buying candy or whatever our quarter could buy us, but how we got there. There were, there were orchards all around us, and the shortest way to the Ben Franklin store was to cut through Farmer Joe's orchard. But if he found you, if he saw you, he would shoot you with his rock salt gun. I never got shot, but my brother did. And it tears up your genes, you know, it was, uh, and yet that was perfectly acceptable. It was a consequence of trespassing. And he was allowed to do that. I remember coming home. We saw Farmer Joe and he was running after us with his gun. And my parents would just say, then don't cut through his, you know, don't cut through his orchard. It was that simple. So if we were going to do it, the consequences were on us. I think if somebody was chasing my kids with a gun, we'd have an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball discussion nowadays. But back then, it was just, you know, different. Just different. Let me see if I can find, if they even have those anymore, rock salt guns. Let's see. Come on. See, now they have rock salt guns, but they're for like shooting flies and they're not they wouldn't hurt a person. Um so yeah, these are all toy like. These are not <laughs> although here's one for a twelve gauge. That's probably what he had. Yep, it's to deter animals from your property, and it comes with an actual cartridge uh, for your 12-gauge gun. And I think that's what he had and shot us with. Wouldn't kill us, but it stung. <laughs> Those were the days. So anyway, I just wanted to come on and say hi and share this with you. My little vintage walk down memory lane with my little dolls. My little dolls, flatsies and kittles. So, I don't know, you know, most of you, according to my demographics, are in the 25 to 35 year old range. So I don't know if you've ever seen these. So, uh, I'm glad to be able to show them to you. And if you are my age, ladies, maybe guys, maybe your sisters had these. Do you remember them? So, okay, I'm going to sign off for now and wish you well and bid you peace and love and light and everything good. And I will see you in the next video.